thank everybody again uh, for showing up and sticking it out. Uh, you came back after lunch. So that's a good sign. Uh, so now all we need to do is make sure we finish this out strong. Uh, I'll come back to my morning. Um, go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Um, your speaker tonight is, to start off, is going to be me. Um, this is the only introduction I'm going to give myself. <laughs> That's all. Um, I do want to thank I do want to thank the gentleman so far uh, for getting us to the point where we are right now. You know, we've gone through, we we we've gone through the idea of the fact of how we study our Bible, and there are things in our in the Bible that that tells us that there's some natural divisions in Scripture automatically just because that's what it says on the page. Then we, we, we've gone in and we found out some other things, the fact that it does make a difference in what we believe because if we're thinking that we're over here, we're going to be missing out on some things and not be prepared for the life that we're going to have in Christ, not just now, but in the ages to come. We got to find out about who we were in Adam. We're going to talk a little bit more about that um, this evening as well. The issue that we're dealing with is we're talking about taking people who are in Adam, those who are dead in trespasses and sins, and taking them from that point to where you're in Christ. And we're going to talk about that new position this evening. That's, that's going to be my, my, my topic for tonight is going to be our new position, the position that we've gone from being in Adam to being in Christ, and what does that mean? All right, so Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to start there. And then we'll get going. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto, unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We're thankful for the folks, the, the, the saints that were ready to come out, the fellowship that we've had so far. We've had we've had good food, but we've also had good spiritual food that, that brings us to a knowledge and understanding of your word and what you're doing today in this dispensation of the grace of God. Our prayer is that we take the information that we study out this weekend, we take it back for ourselves be those Bereans and study those things, find out whether or not those things be so. And if we find out that they are, that we would trust them and apply them to our lives, our daily walk, that we would be able to walk worthy of that calling. That we might be able to praise your son, Jesus Christ, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. So, as we go through this, and, and in, this, in this section of Scripture, in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, there's some things we've already talked about. 11 and on, we, we find out about some dis dispensational <coughs> truths about who we were as Gentiles in times past. And, of course, we know that that's that difference between when God was dealing with the, with the circumcision and he was dealing with the uncircumcision differently. But this is dealing more with you and I individually. And it's something different that back here, when we start talking about and, and Alan did a really good job this morning, and, and other other gentlemen as well. God's God's going to do something with the nation of Israel. He's not finished with it. We know that because that's what Romans chapter 9, 10, and 11 is all about. 
We know that God's not finished with what He's doing or what He's promised to the nation of Israel. He will fulfill that information. He will fulfill those promises. He will fulfill those covenants. Part of that is, as Alan had said this morning, is that national salvation. What we're talking about here in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, is your personal life. God has taken, and, and, and you think about the information as we go through this. We, we've come down and we found out that we were dead in trespasses and sin in time past. Well, he's talking to believers in Ephesians. He's talking to believers, and he's saying, at one time, you were dead in your trespasses and sin. And Alan did a really good job of going through that, uh, dealing with how the spirit, soul, and body, how we had that relationship. Brother Jeffrey is talking about this morning how we were dead in trespasses and sin. And it's, it's one of those topics you can't spend 45 minutes talking about it and understand fully what's going on. But when we start seeing how the spirit, soul, and body work together at that time and how we're spiritually dead and our body is what is in control and then there's something that takes place. The moment that we trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ... <laughs> There is a spiritual circumcision that takes place and it cuts off that body. And at that time, our spirit is made alive unto God. And something changes. And that change ends up changing who we are. Now, really what I want to deal with tonight is more so, what does it mean? Or what is our new position? You were talking about earlier the, the, the truths that we have of this new position, our new identity. A few weeks ago, this this room here is, is used throughout the week uh, for different uh, meetings and things like that. We came in, I think it was last Sunday morning, uh, and on the whiteboard, it said, our identity as we see it. And I got to thinking about that. That was there, and we talked about that that day because we're going through the book of Romans, and we're in Romans chapter 12, starting off in, in verses 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, but we're getting into Romans chapter 12. And, and I looked at that, and I erased everything on the board except for that statement. And so what we did is we changed it from our identity, or what our identity is what, as we see it, to our identity as God sees it. Because that's the issue. Right. Yeah. Right. In a in a in a time in the world where people can't where people choose not to be able to identify as male and female, but I'm something else. Right. When when people don't understand what their identity is, and we're sitting here in a group of people who I would hope knows the truths that we have in this book, that we know our identity, what that is, and what it does for us. And again, I said we've said this before when we've gone over this stuff. There's a lot of people who know how to draw the chart. There's a lot of people that know how to rightly divide. What's it do for you? Amen. That's the issue. And when I see people on social media and things like that, they're like, I'm a mid-ax right provider. We got, and like I said, when I, when I was talking about the folks in here, um, by the way, we we were talking about that here here in Kentucky. We call it Louisville because it was, or, yeah, because it was named after King Louis. And, and Ted was telling me last night Louisville, and I understand that that, that makes sense now. <laughs> and it's not just a dialect where you are. There's there's reason behind things, you know. When I was talking about that, and I see the chart, and I'm like, okay, that's a good first step. But the chart's just a chart if you don't use it to understand that Bible. And the chart's, the chart's a chart. The book that you have in front of you is an issue. What that chart does is help you understand how that Bible's laid out. What that chart does is tells you you're not here. You're not looking for physical healings. You're not looking for certain. You're not looking for some physical thing on this earth. Our hope is where 
in the Lord. Where is he right? Where is he right now? He's seated at the right hand of God the Father. Our position is what? In the heavenlies. When you look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, that's my verse. When we look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, notice it says, and hath raised us up together. In the context, notice what he says in verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. I get saved over here. The moment that I get saved, there's a spiritual transaction that takes place. His death becomes my death. His burial becomes my burial. His resurrection becomes my resurrection. Amen. That's who I am because of Him. That's the difference. The difference in looking at, well, I've got to just trudge through this and, and I have to deal with, with, this, with this flesh. Gary and I were talking about this earlier. We know. Years ago, I wouldn't have said this. I know now that the outward man perishes. I know that now. I didn't when I was 20. I heard Brother Jordan say one time, when you're 40, you, you find out you can't do things you do when you're 20. When you're 50, you believe it. <laughs> I'm not at 50 yet, but I'm starting to see things. I can't do things because of I destroyed my ankle playing basketball in high school. Tore every ligament of my ankle. One day, I don't have to worry about that. Amen. But for now... I have to walk around with a limp sometimes because my ankle, it, it hurts. Okay. I don't have to worry about that one day. Why? Because my identification <laughs> And I know how to deal with this flesh now. Can we read any of that in Matthew, Mark, and Mark? No. What about Acts? After the resurrection? Where do we find that at? What's the Romans 3 by noon? It's an amazing thing to think about. Not only is our Bible laid out a particular way, but there's things in there that God wants us to know. One of my pet peeves is when people, when people quote 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, I have not, I have not seen or ear heard, neither have entered the heart of man. Things that God hasn't prepared for them, yet just don't know. There's a verse after that that says what? He has revealed them. Amen. You know how I know that this body one day is not going to be in pain? Because He's told me about it. And that's an amazing thing to think about. As we go through here, notice He says in verse 6, and hath raised us up. He's dealt with the fact that He's made us alive. He's taken this spirit that was dead. He's given it new life by the gospel. That gospel that we have is a life-giving gospel. Amen. Our soul, and here's the thing, when we take a look and we figure out the way that God works, this is how God works, the spirit, soul, and body. The world Prior to this, jump up to verse 2. Notice in verse 2 it says, Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. There is a doctrine of how to live according to this world. We've been going over this in Romans chapter 12. We've been going over and we find out. Paul says, what about this present world? He calls it a present evil, evil world. There is a system out there that's against what we're doing right now today. And the quicker we figure that out, the quicker it's going to be able to, that we can actually know 
the wiles of the devil and how he works, Paul tells us that we're, we're not supposed to be ignorant of that. We're supposed to know how he works. Why? So that we can combat that with ourselves and with others. When, when I lost my, my, my dad in 2011, <clears throat> that was hard for me. I didn't really have anybody that I, at that particular time that I could really go to. <clears throat> A few years ago, Mike, one of the guys here, he lost his father. We're having conversations about what it's like to lose a dad. And we were able to have that conversation with each other. And what I went through, he would ask, we were able to talk about those things. And I was able to help him through that. I hope. And that's one of those things. We know that this isn't it. We know that there's so much more that's waiting on us because of who we are in Christ. That's an amazing thing to think about. As you go down through here, he talks about the fact in verse 2, he says, Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, which is according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. I teach at a high school here in town. I'm not shocked at the behavior that I see in teenagers today. I'm not shocked. A lot of people are. Well, I can't believe young kid. I'm not shocked by that. Why? They're living according to the doctrine of this world. Which is what? It's all about me. Well, I want. Well, this is what I deserve. Yeah. You know, everybody's throwing around the word entitled today. When Satan stands and says, I will... You know why kids are doing that today? You know, Jesus Christ said, you're of your father. They're dead in their trespasses and sins. When we know and understand where they are in life, then we can actually minister to them. We know that they need a life-saving gospel. You know where they're going to find it? There's about 30 people in here that's got it. That's where they find it. Amen. You go down verse 6, notice he says, And hath raised us up <coughs> together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So I want to take a look at a couple things. Go over with me real quick to Colossians chapter 2. Um, Alan, Alan kind of went over this a little bit this morning as well. Watch this chapter 2, get to Romans chapter 6. And then. Colossians chapter 2. Start off, we'll start off in verse. Uh, we're going to start off in verse six. Um, I hate to cut into context here, but I just really like this verse, so I want to start off here. <laughs> Colossians chapter two, verse six. Notice he says, "As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord." How did you receive Christ Jesus the Lord? Trust in Him. Trust in him. By grace through faith, you placed your faith. You trusted the words on the page that you had before you in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. You didn't do anything to get it. You couldn't do anything to get it, even if you wanted to. He says, As you have received, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So how does that tell you how to walk? The same way you got saved. Well, if you got saved by grace through faith, by trusting in what he did, then, and trusting what the book says, then how are you going to live and walk? By grace, by grace through faith, trusting in what the book says. So when the book says, and this Bible says, that you are raised up with him, what do you believe? Well, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. And I'm just trying to make it day by day. Or do you believe that you're raised up with him? 
You're raised up together. Hallelujah. That's the issue. There's a difference between a head knowledge of knowing some things and a head knowledge of understanding things. I was, I was talking to Gary, this, and I've said this before. I know how to play a guitar. I know you got chords, and I know you strum. But I do not understand how to play a guitar. Does that make sense? I know how it works, but I don't understand how to actually do it. There's a difference between a head knowledge, I know a guitar, I know how it works, but I can't make it make sound the way it should be made. Because I don't understand it. We've got a lot of people who know a chart. We've got a lot of people who know a mid-ax right division. But do you know why they're going off the rails? Because they don't understand. Hey, right. Notice, continue on. Verse 7, rooted up, rooted and built up where? In Him. Where? In Him. There's a relationship that we have with Jesus Christ now. We, uh, we, have, we have the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit indwelling us. We have a relationship that we are in them as well. When, when, I, look at, when I look at you all, I know, I, I know most all of you. Um, if not, I've, I've, I've met you this weekend and I know you. When I look at you, I see your flesh. I see this right here. That's not how God sees you. That's right. He sees his son. Why? Because you're in him and he's in you. That's your position. Glory. What does that mean now? What are we going to do with it? God that, that has appeared to all men does what? Teaches us the denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. You know what the grace of God does? Does the grace of God give us a license to do whatever we want? You know what it does? It teaches us how to live. Because it's Christ in us. The hope of the Lord. It's Christ in you, the life that I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of, not in, in the verse, of the Son of God. That's His faith. That's His faith. Verse 8, notice. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. You know what the world's going to do? They're going to try and tell you, "Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth." They're going to tell you. They're going to tell you, "Yeah, but I've got to walk the same life Jesus walked. I've got to live the same life He did." We don't know Him after the flesh. We know Him as a risen Lord. Amen. When we follow Him here, are we still following Him? Answer is yes. An emphatic yes. Are we still following Christ today? Absolutely. Yes. Amen. Notice he says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. That's that same world, that, that evil world that Paul was talking about over in Galatians. It's that same course they had over in Ephesians chapter 2. And not after Christ. Notice verse 9. For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are what? Are we lacking anything if we're in Christ? No. Again, what does that mean now? Continue on. And ye are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh of the circumcision of Christ. 
That's a spiritual transaction that takes place, and Paul talks about that in Romans chapter 6. When we get saved, do we lose this body the moment that we get saved? The answer is no. Paul knows that. He wrote a chapter, Romans chapter 7, to how you tell you that's why you're doing the things that you're doing is because you still have this flesh that you have to carry around for the rest of your life. Right. Amen. He says, it's not me, but it's seen the well in me. Amen. That is in this flesh. Right. Amen. Does that excuse it? No. No. What do we do? We find out who we are and we start living that. And you know what we do? We take God's Word and we place it into our spirit and then we believe it and we place it down into our soul and we say, body, you're going to start doing what my soul says because this is what the Word of God says. Amen. And you take a look at this. When, when you're going through this, this circumcision that took place in verse 11 and verse 12 and verse 13, that matches up with the death and the burial and the resurrection in Romans chapter 6. That same baptism that we see in Romans chapter 6, that's the same thing that's taking place. And he's going through it. He's saying, Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are what? <clears throat> Risen with him. Didn't we just read that in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6? And we have been, and ye have been raised with him. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. <clears throat> that he was raised with Christ. Notice first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Start off in verse 1. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Give me no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, notice, in much patient, patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned. Notice, by the word of the of truth. By the power of God, by the armor of righteousness, and on, on the right hand and on the left. By honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, and deceivers and yet true. As you go down through there, you find out the thought process that Paul had is what? Well, it doesn't matter what you send my way. My identity is in Him, and I know I'm going to get rid of this flesh one day. By death or by, by catching away, I'm going to get rid of this old thing, and I'm going to get a body fashioned like unto his glorious body that I might be able to rule or to reign with him in the heavens. Glory. By the way, you right now today can reign right now. Amen. Go to, go to Romans. <laughs> We don't get it because of us. And that's the difference that we're, we, that's one of the main differences that we see here that we don't see in other places. Notice Romans chapter 5. Okay. Verse 15. Start off in verse 15. Jeffrey went through the first part through this this morning. Um, we understand that death reigned from Adam to Moses. It doesn't matter that we did that, that we did or did not do the same sin that Adam did. 
we're all under that curse. Notice in verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so as the gift for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more. You, know, you go to the first part of Romans chapter 5 and you see Paul says some things. He says, much more, much more. If you didn't know, if you didn't think that peace with God was enough, here's some other things. And here's some more things. And he says, God's given us so much stuff right up front beforehand. And he says, that's going to be the motivating factor for you to live today the way that you're going to live out there and, and praise and glorify Him. We can do it today. Notice, much more, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Does he say that we shall reign in the ages to come? What's he say? In life. You know what that means? Right now. Today. It doesn't matter how we... You think about that for a second because, you know, I always, I always tell people, if I put $100 in your bank account, and I'll tell you, I'll put $100 in your bank account. Is it there? No? It's not a hope so thing, right? If I tell you it's there, is it there? If you go your entire life and no one tells you that it's there, is it there? Yeah. You know you've got that whether you know it or not? That's right. You know you've got that whether you believe it or not? That's right. You know that you've been justified and sanctified and glorified <coughs> whether you know it or not? Reach it. There are people who are saved in churches today that don't know how to write and divide their Bible. Do you know what? They're glorified and sanctified and, and they don't know it. And they live a life that's miserable because they're trying to live this stuff back here. Because why? This is what they're taught every day. Every Sunday and every Wednesday. That's what they're taught. And they're not taught who they are in Christ. And they can't live the life that God's already given them. They can't spend the $100 because no one's told they've had it. But do they have it? Yes. That's the Do we have a new life in Christ? Yes. What do we do with it now? Again, it's not because we're special. It's not because it's not because God wanted us to have something. It's all because of what His Son did on the cross. God has a plan. That plan includes glorifying His Son, Jesus Christ, in the heavens and on the earth. Get uh, all right. Um, go get uh, actually stay right there, Romans chapter five. Why don't you notice something real quick? The folks here are used to this. So. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> good thing you're not mic'd up. Alright. Notice, notice in verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience many were, what? Made sinners. So by the obedience of one. Who's that one? Christ. Christ. For by, so by the obedience of one shall many be what? Made righteous. When you go back to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, he says, And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. 
It's as if it's already done. And what he says is he's made us to sit in heavenly places. That's your position. Where? In Christ. Whether we feel like it or not, in Romans chapter 6, verse Verse 18. Take a look at this one. Romans chapter 6, verse 18. Verse, we'll start in verse 17. It says, But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. That you trespassed in sin, you were servants to sin. Notice. But ye, that word but, something's different now, but ye have obeyed from the heart. That's this. Obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you, being then what? Free. Made free from sin. <coughs> he made you free from sin. What did you become? <coughs> you became the servants of righteousness. Do you know what it has to do? You know what reigning has to do with it? <laughs> became the servants of righteousness. Can you serve God right now today in this flesh through who we are Christ? Are we going to serve Him one day out there in the heavens? We can do that today because of Him. <laughs> Jump over to Romans chapter 8. Not only are we made righteous, not only are we made free from sin. Romans chapter 8, verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. We're free from death. He's made us free from death. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter one. We'll start in verse twenty, uh, verse twenty-six. Prior to this, in verse twenty-three, Paul talks about the fact that we preach Christ crucified, which in, which was to the Jews a stumbling block and under the Greeks foolishness. But we know that it's what the power of God. We know Romans chapter one verse sixteen tells us what it's the power of God unto salvation. We get down here to verse twenty-six. Notice. For we, for ye see your calling, brethren, how that not, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to be to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not. To bring to naught things that are. Why? That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, where do we glory? In the Lord. Why? Because we preach Christ crucified. We know that there's a difference. Why? Because we know how to study the Bible. It's not just a morning devotion. We don't want to pick a verse and just hope that it applies to us. Or we don't want to pick a verse and make it apply to us. I want to I'm going to read a list of things. I don't remember exactly how much time 
when I exactly started. I want to I want to I want to read a, a list of things that our position gives us. The position that we have is we're dealing with it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. The fact that we're complete in Him, we already know that through Scripture we know that we have been truly furnished unto all good works. If you're complete in Him and you've been truly furnished unto all good works by Him giving you this Bible, what do we lack? Paul talks about to will is present. But the doing is the issue. Allowing, that's why Paul says in Ephesians, let the word Christ dwell in you richly. You've got to get in the book. We've got to read it. We've got to study it. We've got to apply it to our lives. Believe it. Do you know what it's going to do? It's going to automatically do those things that God's prepared your body to already do because He's going to make your body do stuff through His Word. Because it's the words that are the issue. That intake of doctrine changes the way we act and the Word's going to make us do some things. We're, we're creating His workmanship created in Christ Jesus on two good works. It's not we do things to get something. We do it because we already have it. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. We're crucified with Christ. We're buried with Christ. We're alive with Christ. We're ascended. We're raised up and we're seated with Christ. We're joint heirs with Christ. Not only are we an heir of God, but we are automatically, the moment we get saved, a joint heir with Christ. You don't have to try and get it. That's right. You've got it. That's right. Whether you believe it or not. Hallelujah. But the believing is what's going to change some things. You have all sins forgiven. Whether you believe it or not, the believing it changes some things. We're dwelt by the Father and dwelt by the Son and dwelt by the Holy Spirit. We're dead to sin. We're under grace. We have eternal life. We're free from, free from condemnation. We're sons of God. We have fellowship with God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We're redeemed from the curse of the law. We're holy and without blame because we're in Him. Think about that for a second. You look at me and I look at you I don't look holy. You know what God's Word says I am? I'm a saint of the Most High God. I don't have to wait until I die and then miraculously perform three miracles after my death. He declared saint. Amen. Right. God says I am one because I'm in His Son. Amen. Believe what the verses say about you. We're saved by grace and we're sealed until the day of redemption. We're complete in Him. We've been forgiven of all trespasses. We are the elect of God. We're delivered from the wrath to come. That was a thing a few years ago. The church body of Christ going through any part of the tribulation period? The answer is no. And I don't know. Delivered from the wrath to come. You know why? I believe what the verse says. We have peace with God. You know, that's one of those things. And I've, I've talked about this before. There was a lady back at her old church. She would, she would come up to me almost every Sunday morning. She said, would you pray for me that I might have peace with God? I'm like, read Romans chapter 5. Believe what it says. We have peace with God. The one who created the heaven and the earth. Who everybody says, he's some 
monstrous guy up in the sky that just takes pleasure in, in people's suffering. We have peace with a loving God who loved us so much that in while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. We were enemies with Him and He's changed our status from being enemies with Him to being saints. Hallelujah. That's who we are. Glory. In Christ. Amen. You know, it, it's an easy thing when we say things. By, by, by grace, by grace, your faith, we're saying, I believe it. We are forgiven of all trespasses. I don't know. That one's kind of hard. Why is that one so much harder? It's <coughs> a good question, I know. <laughs> we have now received the atonement. Amen. We have all spiritual blessings <coughs> in heavenly places in Christ. It's because of who we are in Him that we have these things. The completeness that we have. The fact that we have a hope laid up for us in heaven. The fact that I've got a body that's not going to have torn ligaments in the ankle. I don't know if this is true. This is my own personal, private, subjective opinion. Um, when I either die or go up in the rapture, I'm probably going to lose some weight. <laughs> Take that weight watchers. <laughs> Finally got a joke to you. There we go. But you think about that. This body that we carry around with all the issues, it's going to go away one day. Because of who we are in Him. Amen. And it's going to be that way until that catches away. When we receive that glorified body. You go read Romans chapter 8 and find out some stuff. You go read 1 Corinthians 15 and find out some stuff. But here's the issue, and this is what I want to leave you with. It's not just enough to know that one day we can serve Him, but that today we can through His Word working in and through us. It's, it's him, he's given us His life to work through us. He's taken a chance to allow His life to live through us. You think about that. Satan's, Satan, Satan's issues, he had a bunch of pride. God takes people, God creates people a little lower than the angels. Takes dust off the earth, forms it, breathes the breath of life in it. We have an opportunity to do things. Not just then, now, that Satan did this. And he's jealous about it. That's why he hates this message. Why is he totally against it? You think about that. You think about that. As we as as we go throughout the rest the rest of the rest of the conference, think about those things. In relationship to who we are now. Forget who we were. Nobody wants to remember that. Amen. Because we know we were there. Yes. We remember the times. Yes. Good or bad, we remember them. We don't want that, we don't want that in our thought process anymore because why? We're changing our mind. We're renewing our mind day by day. We know that this outward man perished, but we know that the inward man is renewed day by day. The thought that we can change the way we think about things. I believe in the book that we have in front of us. Glory. It's an amazing thought process that God's working in us to do just that. To glorify His Son and what He accomplished on the cross. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to study your word. May we take this information, study it out for ourselves, find out who we are in Christ, and allow your word to dwell in us that we make that conscious decision that we trust in the verses.
because we know where the verses came from. That we might be able to glorify your son, Jesus Christ. And not just out in the ages to come, but we can actually do it today for your glory. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you.